The take, will Hyundai have the last laugh? When Hyundai launched its first small car, the Santro, 26 years ago, people stopped on the road and had a hearty laugh at the tall boy shape of that car. It actually used to look quite unusual or even bizarre for those times. There is nothing unusual or joke-worthy about Hyundai's mega initial public offer or IPO that opens today, but the size and timing could be a little worrisome. Hyundai Motor India is launching a roughly 28,000 crore initial public offer on October 15th. It's the largest ever in India's IPO history. The price band is 1,865 to 1,960 per share and will in total cross the Life Insurance Corporation's initial share sale of about 21,000 crore. That was the last biggest one. Now, Hyundai's IPO is a first for other reasons as well. It's the first car company to go IPO after Maruti Suzuki in 2003, so that's more than 20 years ago. Second, it's a multinational listing in the domestic market and there have not been too many in recent decades. That's a good sign of faith in, in, in the domestic markets, both the consumer as well as investor. Not all MNCs or multinationals go down this twin route. And of course, it's an IPO from the East. Most listed subsidiaries of MNCs in India hail from Europe or North America. So what are the concerns? Well, large IPOs can suck out more liquidity than there is and kill appetite for some time. Moreover, large IPOs have also coincided with market peaks, even though there may not have been a direct correlation between supply and demand. On the other hand, of course, is the price, which is quite tightly valued according to many analysts which means that there isn't much upside right now. Another concern is that the money being raised is going to the parent company and not into the company that's Hyundai Motor India. Let's come back to size. A report in the Economic Times says that of the six mega IPOs worth at least 10,000 crores seen on the Lal Street so far, five of them gave negative returns on listing. Not just that, IPO investors who have held on to those stocks in hopes of a turnaround are still sitting on losses, according to data from the Prime database. The rogues gallery includes companies like Paytm and New India Insurance, Assurance, that is, among others. The one IPO that did well and has done well is Coal India. The only message I can take away from that is that there is a bigger fortune under the ground, perhaps, than over it. And not to mention that if it's government-owned, then that could be a bonus. But then Hyundai's vehicles ply above ground. On the flip side, the financials are strong with sales of close to 70,000 crore rupees last year with profits of about 6,000 crores. So this is no deep in losses tech company selling a future dream, rather a tested product firm who has been selling cars in India for close to three decades and exporting them from its world-class factories in Tamil Nadu. Hyundai's margins and price to earnings at this point run close to Maruti, so you can see where and how it's pitched. It's the Koreans versus the Japanese on Indian soil. Hyundai's margins are a little better also because of its portfolio, which is mostly the higher margin SUVs. Abhishek Gaushinde, an analyst I spoke to from research from Sher Khan by BNP Paribas says the Hyundai IPO is an opportunity to buy an MNC and a passenger vehicle stock given that Maruti Suzuki is the only pure play car stock. Mahindra and Mahindra and Tata Motor financials also reflect their tractor and commercial vehicle businesses. He also argues that Hyundai India does not need any money as such because it is generating healthy cash flows. So the funds going to the parent in Korea is not really an issue. So the arguments for and against seem evenly matched, though the ones that are for are based more on fundamentals, while those against more on sentiment. It will be interesting to see what scores in the next few days. Maybe Hyundai will deliver another Santro, something people laugh at in the beginning, but then embrace over time.